Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to continue our conversation. This is part two about how volume knobs and tone pots work in your guitar. In our last video, we talked about how an actual pot works, right? Like the volume pot and the tone pot, and we took one apart and we'll put one of those little gray boxes up there. You can go watch that video right here. It's very, very cool how it works, but now we need to move into part two of this and we need to decide which pots we're going to put in a guitar. The common choices for most guitars, unless you're a bass player or you have a jazz master, which use one meg pots, most people are going to be choosing between 250 and 500k pots, right? So which one do you choose? You could go with what the internet says to do and says single coil guitars get 250k pots and 500k pots go in humbucker guitars. You could say that or we could really understand how it works and do some experimentation for ourselves. So let's talk about this. What is the difference? Remember in our last video, we talked that the closer to ground uh, the knob got, right? With the shorter the path the ground got, that means that the volume went down in the guitar. The further away from ground it gets, so let's say, let's take a 500K pot and we turn it all the way down to a short and our volume is gone. We turn it all the way up 500k and we have all of the signal that is available coming through that pot. But that number, the 500k and the 250, actually add resistance to the circuit even when the tone pot is all the way on 10. What difference does that make with our signal? Not only does the signal get quieter as we turn the volume pot closer to ground, another phenomenon happens and you may be able to experiment with your guitar right now. Uh, you may be able to turn your volume all the way up to 10, play it for a minute, and then turn it down to about 7 or 6. You notice that some of the high frequencies are gone? Because the other phenomena that happens when we turn our guitar volume down, or we get closer to ground, is some of those high frequencies start to go away. If that number, that 500k and that 250k, are the baseline for all of this to happen, then the higher the number, the more high frequencies will still be present in the signal to start with, even when our volume is all the way on 10. A 250K, there will be less high frequencies to start with when the volume is all the way on 10. How does that affect our choices for the guitars that we're building or putting together and modifying? Single, single coil guitars, most of the time, are pretty bright sounding pickups, right? So a lot of people like to start with a 250K pot because they feel that if they start with a 500K pot, there's gonna to be too many highs present in the signal and it's gonna to be too harsh. That being said, not all single coils are created equal. And if you want more highs in your guitar, put 500K pots in it. If you want less highs in it, put 250K pots in it. Remember, this still affects it even when the volume is all the way on 10. In my personal guitars, I like to use, let's say on a Tele, where there's a lot of really bright stuff going on, and maybe even a Strat, I'll use a 250K volume pot, but I'll use a 500K tone pot, because I like kind of the middle of the road there. I like it to be a little bit brighter than normal, but I like to have control of it. See, the thing with a passive guitar, not an active one, like with the MGs or something, but a passive guitar, the more stuff you put in there, the more pots you put in there, the further away from the purest signal possible from the pickups you become. The higher the number of pot, the closer to that pure signal from the pickups you will be. So I like to say I can leave it in with a 500k pot and then I can take it away. But I can't put it back in if I use a 250k pot. So that's why I like to use 500k pots in almost everything. Is that gonna be the same thing for you? Maybe, maybe not, but give it a shot. Uh, we'll put one of these little gray boxes right up here in this video where you can get uh, CTS and Borns pots at Dylan Talks Tone and try for yourself. There's another option there on Dylan Talks Tone too, check it out. It is called a no load tone pot. And that's a whole nother deal because it takes the pot out of the circuit completely. So, in our next video, we're gonna talk about no load tone pots. And I have a guitar here that I just put one in uh, this morning. And so in the next video, we're gonna talk about how that works, we're gonna listen to it, and I'm gonna show you exactly how, what that does because it's really, really fun. My name is Dylan, this is Dylan Talks Tone. If you have any questions about tone pots, volume pots, any kind of wiring in your guitar, setup, all that kind of stuff, do me a favor, leave a question in the comments below 
we'll make a video just for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because we're going to be talking about more of this very, very soon on this YouTube channel and I would like for you to not miss it. So hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell next to it and you'll know next time we make a cool video just like this one.